this podcast is actually going to be about types of weapons that you can use after you pass through some type of checkpoint, like I said, maybe at a concert or a sporting event or something like that. What can you use a weapon? Pass that. Welcome to the Impact Defense Podcast. We are dedicated to giving you the information that you need to help keep you safe. Now let's join our hosts, Brian, Jada, and Kylie. If you are looking for a such missile tool that you can carry that is not a firearm, go ahead and go over to theatomicbear.com and use the coupon code Impact Events. It gives you 20% off of anything that you purchase. Yes, 20% off. You look like you were asking a question. Yes, 20% <laughs> off of anything that you purchase over there. So, and we really like Atomic Bear. We like their tactical pins, uh, some other stuff. And now on to the news section of our podcast with your host, me. This story comes to you from Kansas City, where on January 31st... Kansas City, Missouri, or Kansas City, Kansas? Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, I'm just curious. (laughs) Kansas City, Missouri... On January 23rd, or no, what? January 31st. I wasn't even close. <laughs> we had January, right? <laughs> January 31st, 2017. Um, surveillance cameras on a city bus captured this dramatic event. A disgruntled man on the bus was caught harassing the female bus driver, put her in a bear hug around the... Uh, chair when she stood up to try and get him off of her he started to put her into a headlock when an elderly man on the bus came up with his cane and started beating the attacker (laughs) they stumbled out of the bus and the police shortly arrived on the scene and arrested the man harassing the bus driver that's awesome so just the old man beating him with his cane okay so, now, it may have been almost a month now at this point in time. We were talking about uh, self-defense for the aging. It may have been more than a month. And cane was something we talked about. Um, yeah, it's a weapon of opportunity. Mm-hmm. So, but good for him. Used what he had, and he started beating the guy with it. And... Um, that is absolutely freaking awesome. Yes, on the camera you can see him holding his cane with both hands above his head and just whopping. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like it wasn't just a get off of her. It was a die. No, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. So moving on from there. Okay, so uh, going on, moving on from there. Um, that's a perfect example of somebody using a weapon of opportunity. Now, so if, if we're looking at a situation like heading into a concert, um, I, I don't go to concerts as much as I used to, but like... It was because of me. The, I showed up, so... Yeah. Sorry, we did now all our fun... your parents don't get to do anything fun anymore? Yeah, pretty much, exactly. We used to do all kinds of fun things before she came along. We just realized, like, oh man, we used to go... Uh, canoeing we used to go uh, tubing we used to go to concerts we used to get we had season passes to a theme park we all kinds of fun things that we used to do and then we stopped doing everything fun once she come along except for like hiking we still do hiking yeah that's fun but not so as fun as like going to concerts and you don't places. know you've never really been so <laughs> i have to start doing to start doing fun things again i know i know it's just funny that we realize <laughs> All right, anyway, back on subject. <laughs> so when you're walking into something like a concert or sporting event or anything, a lot of times now you have to empty your pockets. You have to do whatever. And you want to stay within. We went to a hockey game. Yeah, we went to a hockey game. We went to baseball games. Hockey games are fun because they just ram into each other. It's great. It's really fast paced. We are. This is not a hockey <laughs> podcast, though. It's a self defense podcast. Anyway, as you go into these places, you generally have to like empty your pockets. You have to like go through a metal detector. You have to do all these things. You're supposed to have a clear bag if you have things in a bag. Yeah. Well, I don't usually carry a bag, so at any of these things, they're going to check and make sure you don't have any weapons on you. There are a few things that you can probably carry that are weapons into something like that that does not necessarily look like a weapon. Um, sometimes they would keep you from carrying something like a coupon or something like that as well. 
Okay, so if there, if you don't know what a coupaton is, nope. No. That's a baton. Oh, why did I think? Coupaton? That's an expandable baton. A coupaton is about six inches or so long, four to six inches long, and it's either made of wood or metal. And it a lot of times they'll connect them to their keys, and it's just this nice little stick, and it's it's just a force multiplier. I can hit it take the end and hit you with it uh, I can punch with it in my hand it's going to strengthen my hand up I a little bit sell those yeah we've had some we've had some we've sold some um, so they they're a, basically a self-defense keychain but it's pretty obvious that basically everybody knows what they are a tactical pin that does not look like a tactical pin as we've that said doesn't it before look like a mini shotgun yeah pretty much you know something some and it doesn't technically really look like a shotgun but basically it looks like a weapon, it looks like a tactical pen, you know? Uh, there are some out there that, that looks like a normal pen. Atomic Bear has one uh, called the Rebel, and I think it's my favorite pen, especially for that one, uh, for the fact that it does not look like a tactical pen. You know, most pens can be used just not as effectively as a tactical pen. That's true, so there are like some good, hard, decent yeah. quality plastic pens, and then yeah. there's some others that are metal pens. Uh, they're not going to stand up to as much abuse as a tactical pen would, but it would it would do the trick. If you have nothing else, your keys can also work as just a small force multiplier tool. Not that it's our favorite, but no. it can be used. Yeah. I, I think I guess probably our favorite would be a tactical pen, right? Yeah. Would that be your favorite of the things that you could just think of that you could carry through a checkpoint? Yeah, probably. I mean, it, yeah, it would be mine too. Because it could be used like a coupaton. It's a lot stronger and everything than a key would be or anything else that I could really think of at this present moment. All right, so if you haven't seen any of our videos that we've done on keys, go over to our YouTube channel and yes. check out some of our videos that yes. we've done on keys. Yes. If you're gonna use keys for self-defense, we are not going to hold them in between your fingers, no. okay? That is really dumb. Every time we do a self-defense seminar, I will have somebody Put the keys in between their fingers and punch me with it like people tell them to do. They end up fold the keys end up folding down or they just really hurt on impact and try to fold They'll up. They'll fold up. Yeah, most of the time they will fold one way or the other. <laughs> it's a if, good way to split your own hand. Yes. Yeah. It does not punch a hole in somebody like, you know, many people would like you to believe that it does. I let people do it every time. I have never broken skin i've never had broken skin from it at all never even scratched me um so that's just not the best way to do it i've also seen well and but then there, yeah but there is a yeah but you, guess it, that's not something we can talk about because people yeah. people will see that and know oh that's a weapon it looks like a key but it's a weapon uh that um the what's it called cricket yeah the cricket makes tactical key maybe some know. some kind of key Cricket self-defense key. Oh. Yeah, okay, cricket self-defense key, whatever it is. Um, it's an awesome thing. It really mm -hmm. is real neat. It actually will work to stick between your fingers and punch. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like it would bend down too much. What we little we've done with it so far, um, it, it seems good. But I don't know that you could get that through a checkpoint. That's probably true. That's probably true. <laughs> uh, maybe if you have it on your key ring with the rest of your keys, somebody will look, won't, won't think too much about it belt with a hard belt buckle yeah but uh, a couple things on the keys steel toe boots wait a second there <laughs> yeah you're right um, a couple things <laughs> with know. the keys though um people talk about like trying to use them to slash and uh we've always been the type i'm always a show me kind of person okay so we actually took a key pretty new key actually a very new key that it has it was the sharpest key i had uh, if any key had a chance of actually cutting me, that would have. And we actually struck across my arm. It marked it up, but it still did not in any way break the skin. I had red lines on my arm. It's the same as like running your fingernail over your arm. Yeah, it, it just doesn't really actually do anything. The person that we saw that was uh, advocating for this just took paper and layered like butcher paper over top of cardboard and then was like slashing at it and saying like, see, that's how that's gonna do your skin. Your skin is not the same as butcher paper. Or okay. cardboard. Or cardboard. <laughs> so uh, just, just know that that really doesn't do anything. It's not comfortable, but 
I'm not willing to let somebody do something to me that I really, really feel like is going to seriously injure me. And Also another thing, high heels. Yeah, um, it wouldn't work for somebody like me. But, yeah, uh, but uh, for girls. <laughs> it's 2021. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> so let's explain how you would use high heels if you're going to use high heels. It's not the greatest thing in the world to run away from a situation if there's an active shooter. But how could you use it? Oh, so usually there are two different types, either chunky heels or um, the more pointy ones. Um, as far as the chunky ones go, they make a really good bludgeoning weapon. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, mm -hmm. And then they still usually have sharper edges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then as far as the ones with the point goes, I feel like that one's relatively obvious how that could end up hurting someone. Yeah. Um, whether it be taking it off of your foot, holding it in your hand and hitting someone with it, or leaving it on your foot and doing some sidekick action or foot stomping action. Yeah, but that's not the foot stomp. Yeah, the sidekick, actually mm -hmm. throwing a kick with it, it's not advisable. We've actually heard a story, a true story, mm -hmm. that... Um, Somebody that we were talking to about all of this, uh, one of their students actually was bar hopping and uh, she was being followed by somebody and finally the guy was messing with her and wasn't leaving her alone and she ended up throwing a sidekick and she ended up leaving the uh, heel right in his leg. So it penetrated, went in his leg and her foot come out of the heel as she pulled her leg back. Yeah, that would only be something you'd do if you had a ton of training. Yeah. Yes. And still. Still, that's a really iffy situation. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun to think about, though. Yeah. It's funny. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Yeah. Uh, some people, you know, probably offended that I would laugh at that, but I think it's hilarious. If you're going to mess with somebody like that, you, you kind of deserve it. Yeah. Well, following someone that you don't know, especially a woman, whatever. Just, yeah, yeah no, no, trying they deserve to grab it. Your, their arm or something. Yeah. It's just, yeah, you, you deserve something. Yeah. <laughs> I, in my, that's my opinion. Um, like you said, a, a belt with a good strong belt buckle on it. You can actually like grab it from the end without the belt buckle. And wrap it around your knuckles, make a fist, and now you actually have some backing for your fist, but also you can whip that belt buckle across their face. I mean, I've seen just leather bracelets with metal studs on them and mm. things that, that you if just your slide up around your knuckles and use that as a striking yes. weapon. Yeah. Obviously, the belt thing, you would definitely have and to would, have a lot of It would help your knuckles time. a little bit. <laughs> Save your knuckles a little bit of pain. Steel-toed boots. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, there's steel-toed shoes as well. So, yeah, that would make... If, you're, if you've got the ability to kick, you can kick in the shin or something like that with a steel-toed. That would probably hurt really, really bad. It hurts to take anything to the shin. Yes. Anyway. Any kind of ring with a large rock on it. Yes. True. Um, True. Just turn it... You can punch with it, but we really prefer to spin the ring around to where it's facing the inside of your hand and using that to come at the face, at the eyes, like just gashing and ripping down more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, use one hand to grab the back of their head and use the hand with the ring to just claw down, basically, and use that ring to... Well, you get DNA evidence off of there. If you can create uh, you a gash... A yeah, if you can create a gash on the forehead, too bleed into their eyes yeah and, and you leave a a very obvious like oh and then there's a lineup and so which one of these guys oh it's the dude with the big gash down his face it's that guy <laughs> oh you want the dna evidence it's right here under my ring okay uh <laughs> those now something that you might could pick up once you're in there as well there's there's things that we could like you know there's usually souvenir things there are Food and drink things. There are some different things mm, that you can do once of, you get in there. Any kind of glass bottle drink or metal metal water bottle. A mm -hmm. lot of times they'll have those as souvenirs. They're yeah. really popular right now. Um, anything like that that you can use as a bludgeoning weapon will work really well. The glass water bottle, even if it breaks, can generally still be used. Yeah. So you want something like a, a, a cup, uh, a bottle. big fountain drink. No, no, what I'm saying is like something like a fountain drink or a coffee or something like that. Personally, I don't like coffee, but that's just because I like coffee, and it's hot. That gives you that too. But any kind of like ice drink or anything that you could just like throw in their face, because it's just something that is not going to necessarily hurt them, but startle them enough or mess with them enough, you can get away. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, either like a souvenir or even sometimes with like something you could buy candy. We did one of our videos where one of the things that I picked up uh, as an improvised weapon 
was a candy. What would that say? Hell candy. Little helicopter thing. Um, but it, it was, was just, just a plastic container attached to a little fan, and it had candy inside. So one of the hidden candy, hidden candy packages. Yeah, so basically I looked at it as like, oh, look, that looks like something I could use as a bludgeoning weapon. So if it looks like it's something that you could hit somebody up the, upside the head with, then it would probably actually work. You could just kind of purchase these things, usually fairly inexpensive. Well, I guess one thing we haven't talked about is little travel hairsprays. <laughs> Can you take something like that into a concert or something, though? I don't know. It's possible. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to. All right, basically, anything with improvised weapons that you want to think about, look at it and say, how can I use this to either disrupt someone long enough for me to get away, disrupt somebody long enough for me to hit them, or anything like that, or maybe possibly hit them with. I mean, you kind of have to start getting that in your head and just kind of look at something and go like how could i use this as a weapon and start just making that part of your normal kind of pro thought process and that kind of sounds odd as a normal thought process but it's not necessarily a bad thing unless you're looking at it from like a and, and with the idea of doing something criminal with it just know that a lot of crimes happen when you travel yeah it's the truth all right, if you guys are enjoying this podcast, please go over to Apple Podcasts, leave us a review and five-star rating. That would help us out tremendously. Also, share this with a friend that you think would get something out of this. And don't forget, for everyday personal protection items, there is no one better than Atomic Bear. And you get 20% off with the coupon code Impact Defense. Thank you guys so much for listening. Stay safe, stay alert, and we'll see you in the next podcast. See you guys. Thank you for listening to the Impact Defense Podcast. If you would like to learn more about how to keep yourself safe, check out the articles, videos, courses, and seminars at www.impactdefense.online. We also do training for security teams, churches, businesses, groups, and more. Stay sharp, stay focused, and train hard.